close your eyes and focus on the feeling of the breath. Notice where you feel it as it comes in, where you feel it as it goes out. And you'll be talking to yourself about the breath as well. So learn how to ask some useful questions. Is the breath comfortable? Is it too long, too short, too heavy, too light, too fast, too slow, too deep, too shallow? You can adjust it in lots of different ways. And then you can decide what feels best. You're giving yourself something good to talk about and you're trying to create a sense of belonging here in the present moment. So you can watch your own mind, watch your intentions in action, so you can sort them out, which ones you want to follow, which ones are skillful, which ones are unskillful, which you want to put aside. Those are useful questions to ask. A lot of the meditation, a lot of training the mind is learning how to train yourself, how to talk to yourself wisely. Because we're already talking to ourselves all the time. As the Buddha said, wherever we go, we go with craving as our companion. Sometimes you wonder who's talking to whom in there. And a lot of times it's craving, talking to whoever else might be in there, saying, I want this, I don't want that, I like this, I don't like that. And all too often our cravings don't have any, any standards, any reliable standards. They just go by their urges, they go by whatever happens to pass into the mind. So you want to change the conversation inside. Wherever you go, take the Dharma as your companion. What's the Dharma? It's any teaching that helps you understand why there's suffering and what you can do to put an end to it. Now your cravings will tell you, they have their ideas about why you're suffering. It's because of somebody outside or something outside is not the way you want it. And their, their solution usually is to kind of change things outside. But as the Buddha said, the real cause of suffering is the craving itself. The reason we crave is because we don't really understand our own minds. Because there's something really good inside, something of really solid worth. We don't pay much attention to it. We pay attention to other things. And so we're willing to believe whatever the craving has to say. It's just other things outside that are the cause of suffering, and we have to change things outside in order to end the suffering. But if you had to have the world perfect before you could not suffer, nobody would be able to put an end to suffering, because different people have different ideas of perfection. Nobody could agree, which is why we're fighting one another all the time. This is why countries fall apart. We can't agree on what's, what's really good, what's really right. But you can't wait for the country to agree. You have to look inside yourself and realize, okay, when there's craving in the mind, there's going to be suffering. And so you have to sort out which cravings are reliable and which ones are not. You can't just tell yourself to stop craving on a dime. You start sorting them out. And the Dharma is what helps you sort out who are your true friends, who are your false friends. You act on good cravings and you can develop the path. You develop virtue, you develop concentration, you develop the sermon inside. Then the voices that help you with that, okay, those are the voices of the Dharma. Take them as your companions. Ultimately, they get you to a point where you don't have to talk to yourself anymore because there's the happiness that's totally satisfying. It's not never going to change. But until you get to that point, learn how to sort out who inside is talking to whom. And when your cravings are skillful, when they're not, if they're unskillful cravings, you've got to put them outside. Put them out to pasture. You don't need them anymore. Some of them will sound just like you. They've died, got your voice, they've got your intonation. It's because you've been identifying with them for so long. So you've got to sort out who in there of, of your many, many identities can you trust. And you find that as you have the good companions, the Dharma companions, then life goes a lot better. You're creating fewer problems inside. And the problems that come from outside don't weigh so heavily on the mind. That's when you know you've got good friends, friends that stick with you and tell you the right things to do.